Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this exercise we'll explore and use the JavaScript Gyroscope API. There are sensors in devices such as phones and tablets, but not limited to just phones and tablets, in which developers can monitor the rate of rotation around the device's three primary axes, the pitch, the roll, and the azimuth. This is how we program things in our applications to move or happen according to the rotational angles that the person is moving their device along the X, Y, and Z axis. The numeric data we receive is radian per second, which represents the angular velocity. Okay, I wrote you guys a little demo application just to get you started. And you can see that when we move the tablet and rotate it around, we get the data on the screen for the angular velocity of each axis and the ball's current location. So you can see as I'm moving it, the ball goes across the screen. And uh, you can program all kind of cool stuff with that. Oh, I forgot to mention that when you rotate it, I gave it that outline in the CSS where it has those little fan blade looking things. So you can see as I rotate the tablet, I think that's the Z axis. Yeah, that's the Z axis. The ball rotates. Okay, now I'll show you the code and explain it line by line. First, we have some styling for the little ball in the middle of the screen. Here's the body of the document and the ball. And the ball, we have certain CSS properties assigned to it to allow it to move and give it uh, certain transitions and the way it looks. Close those back up. And then we have two elements. One is report box and the other one is the ball. The report box is where I'm writing the data, uh, certain data into the document so it can be seen for developer purposes only. And the script is very simple. We're going to make some variables. The first one is sensor, and that's going to be equal to new gyroscope. So here we have our gyroscope object. Then we have an X, Y, Z, and report variables that we'll be using all of these down in our script here. So the first thing we do with the sensor object is run its start method. Then we're going to listen for the on reading event. And we'll also listen for the on error event. And we're going to run a function called error handler if any errors occur. And that's right here. Let me open that up. And you're just going to write to the console what the event name was and the event message. Now in the sensor on reading, uh, we have a anonymous function here. Now the first thing we do is target this report box element and we're going to write some things into the report box so we can see them for developer purposes on the screen. And we're getting the sensor X, sensor Y, sensor Z, and the ball's position using offset left and offset top, and the rotation of the ball. So all that data is compounded into the report variable and then we write it into the inner HTML of our report box. Now the next thing I did was I took the XYZ variables we created here and I'm going to do some calculation to create numbers that we want for making the ball move around in the way we want it to. And all I did was multiply the sensor X, sensor Y, and sensor Z by certain numbers that I was just playing around with to make the ball move the way I wanted it to. Then finally, here we make the ball move. Ball.style.left would be the ball's current offset left plus X, which is this number here that represents this computation. We're going to move it that many pixels. That's your horizontal plane. Then on your vertical plane, we affect the top property and move the ball from its offset top current position minus y. That many pixels. 
Then to make the ball rotate, we affect the transform property and give it the rotational angle that we want using the Z variable. And we make it rotate that many degrees. And that's everything in the script. Now there's probably dozens of different ways that a developer could use this sort of code to create all kind of cool things. Uh, for instance, like what we had in this example application here that you can play around with is a ball moving around the screen. If you took it just a little bit further and you had uh, maybe a, uh, a little maze or one of those wooden things where you make the ball roll around on it and fall into the holes, you can program some collision detection to make sure that the ball is lined up directly over the hole and then make the ball disappear into the hole or just make the ball disappear essentially and go wherever it needs to go to the next level or whatever but there's tons and tons of other ways that this could be used for creative minds out there alright I hope you've enjoyed this exercise and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>